Helena Rebels in the background, Miss Simida. It's all about the veterans and uh, Jeanette services bringing together the women in worship, the timeless edition. And so later on after the show, after the show, don't run away and go there now. After the show, make sure you find your way to the UPSA auditorium later in the afternoon. Make sure you go and enjoy at 4 p.m. exactly 4 p.m. And it's going to be semi-virtual. So if you can't make it to the auditorium, you can join in, you know, on your various Facebook platforms. But it's going to be interesting. Fireworks yesterday during the rehearsals, and so you can just imagine what it's going to be like in the auditorium today so helena rabbles the likes of mary gansa tego sisters I, i've seen one of the sisters having an arm problem but i'm sure she's going to shake it off and yes she's going to uh, you know perform with her sister and and other other legends tiwa would also be performing and amy newman and so if you love yourself our legends all of them all of them they will be there and so make sure uh you join them but in the meantime you can you can take this as a pre prelude to the main show and so in the course of the show we'll be playing some interesting interesting sounds from our legends and so make sure you join them women in worship honoring and timeless edition the semi-virtual one happening today at the upsa auditorium madina and the ticket is 100 cities i'm sure by now if you don't have your ticket i'm sorry <laughs> It's all sold out and so you may want to join in semi-virtually all right and so we are zooming straight into our conversation for today we are looking at abuse in marriages this may sound more like a cliche but it happens in this present day no matter the number of times we discuss it people are still being abused in their marriages and today our focus is going to be on the women yes because women are seen as the most vulnerable women and children we are seen as the most vulnerable in society take it or leave it that is the reality on the ground and so anytime we are given the opportunity we'll make sure that we amplify their voices to make sure they are heard and seen and giving the right help and support and so today we want to focus more on the women in fact the show is dedicated to our women but as i've always issued a disclaimer it is not a feminist show not at all but our focus is on the development of our women and so we'll be discussing issues concerning women and today our focus will be on abuse in marriages and so i'm in the studios with counselor adolfoli he joined us via phone last week and this week we are glad and more than honored to be hosting him right here in the studios of tca radio counselor thank you so much for joining us good afternoon and welcome Good afternoon. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. I hope you are doing well. My grace is keeping me. And staying safe, yeah. most importantly. All right. And so later, we'll also be going on to the phone lines and we'll be speaking with Reverend Albright. He is a psychologist. And so he'll be giving us the psychology view of the discussion and a victim. Yes, a female victim of abuse marriage. And so stay with us. And let's zoom straight into the conversation. So this may sound like a very broad topic, counselor abuse in marriages first and foremost as a counselor what's your understanding of abuse all right thank you and greeting to your listeners mm. abuse can take any form it could be physical it could be emotional it could be psychologically and it can be sexually mm. and abuse if, if you take physical if somebody's physically harming you either he's pulling you punching you it's is is anything that the person is doing to harm you create a form of violence as physically abuse mm. if it's emotional sometimes people don't even recognize emotional abuse has to separate it from what they call love mm. when your partner becomes so possessive controlling you want to know wherever you are what are you doing they're trying to humiliate you blackmail you or betray yeah. you they are all form of emotional abuse sexually could be somebody forcing you to experience sexual in a form that you are not ready for uh -huh. at a time or whether you are not even in the mood for it and the person is forced you to do that just because you are in a relationship or in marriage with you mm -hmm. so all these things are supposed to uh, make you feel good they make you feel bad so marriage or relationship the aim is for you to be respected mm -hmm. love and be considered as a human being who okay. deserve better of course but when you get into abusive relationship they make you feel less opposite of that yeah and that is not a good thing to do definitely so this abuse animal <laughs> we are talking about is it inherent in every human being or to something that is adopted 
along the way? It comes in various forms. Some people have been during their childhood, they've seen their parents abuse. Okay. And they've lived in an environment which abuse has been normal thing. So they grow up that if they cannot control you, the best option is to tame you, to abuse you. So when they get in a relationship with you, they want to control you. Mm. And if you are not good the way they want it, the best option is to punish you <laughs> or put you in your right place. And that can be abuse. Some other people have anger, pains, which has happened in the past. And they are not be able to deal with this. So as soon as you do something that triggers that pains, they're trying to fight back. So somebody hurt them in the past, you're in a relationship with them, and they trigger, they inflict these pains with you. So they are bad for you with a bad, bad for that that you have not caused anything, you are not the cause of mm. it, but it's with them. Some two don't love themselves. They don't have that self-esteem, high self-esteem, they have low self-esteem. And they believe that the best way to compliment for that is when they are in relationship with someone. So when they are with you, they, they are attached to you, they lead on you, and they control you. And I love you. You have to respond, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I miss you. You have to say, I, I miss, miss you. you. Too. Mm. Where mm. are you? They want to do anything mm. that shows that, uh, that to take away that kind of love they have been missing. They want to replace it with you. Uh -huh. And they are insecure, very, very much insecure. Mm. So when they see you around someone else, they think the person is getting you away from them. So in that attempt, they try to cut off friends, relatives, anything that, that makes you happy. They want to take it away. They isolate you. Mm. Mm -hmm. So so in that instance, then the person doesn't love you because you, you can't love me and be beating me and be causing me pain and all of that. Is that love? Elisha, when it comes in, they, they make you feel like they love you because they tell you that I have that strong feelings for you. And they give you all sorts of compliments, gifts, mm. and stuff like that. So it's like a trap you fall for. Mm. So once you are in that relationship, knowing the person loves you, then the other aspects of their life keep on coming. And they hurt you, they come and say, I'm sorry. You know, I love you, that's what I did, what I did. <laughs> they keep on reminding you, I yeah. love you, that's what I did, so, so, yeah. and so. Yeah. So you forgive me, let's forget about it, and let's start afresh. And it continues like that in that circle mm. so for a christian lady i mean before you say i do what are some of the signs you should notice in your partner that should let you know that mm, this might be a very abusive relationship do i stay can i tame him or i move out the first is respect anybody who doesn't respect you does not love you mm. You needed to be treated with respect, no matter whoever you are, your yeah. status in life, whatever yeah. you have. No, so anyone who comes to your life in the name of love or relationship, if the person do anything that disrespects you, you are heading towards abuse. Mm. That's the first part. Second, the person needs to accept you for who you are. This is me, then I can help you to become better. But if they don't accept you, they are constantly trying to change you. I want you to become someone else. I want you to behave in a certain way. Then you are heading towards trouble. Mm. Some people also comes in and their focus is they, they see you as an object of controlling. They have to have a power yeah. over you. So when you have that person, they, you, you start calling and even they are calling, it's call waiting. Who, <laughs> who are, are you talking, talking to? to? <laughs> I call you, we're not there. Where were you? Uh -huh. Who are you with? Let me talk to that person. Mm. That kind of confirmation. And it goes so strange, like tracking you, hacking with your social media accounts, putting spyware on your phone mm. to read your messages. Who we'll chat with you, read this, give me your phone. And you know that you're heading towards abuse. Mm. So people should let you be free in a relationship. They also understand that there are other aspects of you, other family or relationship mm. that they came to meet and they need to respect those kind of yeah. stuff. The time I spend with you is a gift. I appreciate that time and I make best out of it. Mm. They want us to spend more time with you. The more we, if you spend one hour and you make me enjoy one hour, I would love to spend two hours with you. Mm. But if you're going to force me to enjoy two hours or three hours because I pay you a visit, I have to leave in the next 30 minutes because you don't want me to go, you close the door or it forces me not to go if we are heading towards abuse. So in such a situation, what does the Christian lady do? Do I do I call it off or I give them another chance or I pray about what can I do? Because I love him. The Christian lady first needs to be recognized that 
I am not treated with the respect and the love I need. I need. And again, the person is being more selfish, more selfless. It's not putting me in first. Once you feel like that, you have to take a decision. So let the person know how you feel mm. about the relationship. If the person really wants you, let's work at it. If there's any way I can help you, let me know. But if the person not take that position, I would think that you are making excuses. And the person keep on repeating. Look, you have no permission to leave a relationship. You just give notification <laughs> or alert. I'm gone. Yes. Ta -da. I, I've taken my decision. <laughs> I'm sorry. We can't be together. I wish you all the best. Can't I pray about it? Because it says prayer answer, answer it all things. Can't I pray for him? Can, can he ever change? We pray for people. You know, mm -hmm. salvation is personal stuff. Mm -hmm. It's a personal invitation. So as I'm praying for you, there's parts you have to do. There's parts for you to do. Mm -hmm. So as I said, when you uh, uh, realize this threat, I'm talking to you about it. If you want me to help you, we can help. But there are people, they don't even see they have a problem. <laughs> they think it is you. Mm -hmm. And in that regard, you cannot help the person. Mm -hmm. Then you have to run for your own life. Mm -hmm. But the person admit I have a trouble, we can work around it. As I'm praying with you, and, and I'm seeing some changes, I'm going to appreciate you. Oh, you've done very well. Things are getting better. Then we can work in that direction. Mm. Are there specific instances in the Bible, examples where there were reported cases of abuses in relationships or marriages? Are there any accounts of such? <coughs> yes, mm. there has been a couple of abuse in the relationship. Mm. Uh, um, um, can can you use the example of um abraham you know sarah giving the house help to is, is that abuse do you call that abuse <laughs> 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 does that qualify um, I, I i will not qualify much more of abuse but mm -hmm. uh it's getting there because mm. uh sarah was very much emotionally hurt yeah and i think that if you love me do a b c d uh -huh. like uh -huh. and one way or other because the husband doesn't want to hurt yeah the wife the wife yeah. he goes ahead just to do things to please the wife yeah this could be one way or other trying to show love but at the end of the day you know that you're doing something that is not worth so yeah. it won't call it sacrifice but it's a bit of emotional kind of abuse because yeah. if you don't do it it means you don't love me yeah this has happened with samsi and co yeah with Delilah. Mm. Um, mm. when tell me where your secret is and yeah. stuff like that if you are not able to say it it makes me feel like you don't love me yeah. more then you go ahead to show that person so so and so yeah. and the person take advantage of that yes mm. that's an abusive relationship that's abuse in relationships in your own experience or number of years in counseling people i'm sure you've come across such cases why do you think a lot of women and most christian women stay in such relationships or in such marriages because you speak to some people they just don't want to leave because their church is against it this is against it this i mean why do you think they stay in there are a number of reasons mm. so such few of them um one lady i spoke to yes she was said the mother informed her, made her know right from birth that you are not beautiful, you are ugly. No. And she carried that feelings, a sense that I am not beautiful. beautiful. And you're able to compare herself to other siblings mm. and say that I'm different from them with my complexion and other stuff. So with this mind, what it does is when it gets out and somebody say, I love you, the other person has done me a favor just to like me. So in this case, if I'm with you, you are even abusing me, you are doing me a favor by being with me. Yeah. Others in the family, they are not being appreciated. They're not being listened to. Whenever they bring input, suggestion, they are being put down. So they have this low self-esteem. So they go out looking for acceptance. So when it comes my way and you accept me to be in a relationship with me, you started abusing me. What I said, even my family or the people who are considered family, let me down. So what is it? Others also has been waiting for a relationship for a long time. They have not had a relationship. So when someone comes their way, they invest so much to it. Their time, their emotions, resources, everything. So leaving becomes difficult. They are always comparing how much I've put into the relationship. And the fear is when I leave, I might meet somebody worse. Mm. So you hear statements like the devil, you know, is better <laughs> than the angel 
you don't know exactly and that's all lies mm. some have issues of shame that if i leave the relationship and i look like i'm going to be uh people are going to say oh, you are alone you don't have anybody especially those married if you divorce or if you go on separation there's going to be a laughter so let me just endure it as long as i can yeah. all these things are not a good thing to go mm. to do when would you call it the peak of it i mean this is the last straw that will break the camel's back when do you say i am gone not again <laughs> in a relationship <laughs> you see you are learning about a person and people show you who they are by their actions and their works mm. so as i'm learning about you and what i'm seeing is not a good thing or i don't feel good about it we need to go to back to the table and talk about it if you change we have to let go that is different from those who you are married to mm. mm-hmm. if i'm married to you and you started showing this and it gets your pace i realize that you are not going to change it's either i change to fit you <laughs> <laughs> in this case what i'll tell you that i might not be able to divorce you mm-hmm. i'm going to go on for separation separation means that i can't continue getting myself hurt repeatedly i don't want to lose my life i know you have a trouble or a problem that you have not admitted so i'm going to be here i'm not seeing anybody i'm with my family or a friend or whatever it is i'll be praying for me for you from, from afar, afar. Mm. i'll love you from afar and i'll be hoping one day you cherish the relationship we have and you work on yourself so that we can get back together what if he never or he he Sometimes never comes back to his senses but they change at the last minute when they realize that they are losing what matters so much to them mm. those who do that they don't want to lose the relationship but so they don't know how to save it and they think that the best way to save it is when they abuse you they put fear in you then you stay but when you get that kind of strength and they realize that they are losing it some of them go back mm. and let's work on it the fear is when they see you going out with another person trying to move on with another person mm. in this case either i don't have you or no one else has you mm. yeah but if you are leaving because we are hurt and the pain is just too much for you and you're not going to be with someone there are chances that they want to work on yeah. that yeah yeah well if you just joined us you're listening to 31 status live on the christian avenue my name is pamela boating and our topic on board for discussion this afternoon is abuse in marriages especially abuse meted out to our sisters our christian sisters out there who are listening to us what can you do what does the bible implore you to do as a christian lady when you're faced with such a decision or such a situation i'm in the studios with counselor Adofoli and he's helping us expand this topic we'll be going on to the phone lines pretty shortly and we will be speaking with a victim a very popular popular Ghanaian actress uh, who has been very vocal about her abusive marriage in the past how she overcame and her advice to all of us who are listening it's still the Christian Avenue um, Pamela Boating 31 status we are taking a quick musical break make sure you keep sending us your messages most of you are watching us live on Facebook keep us uh, keep on sending your comments via our Facebook platform if you have any questions if you have any suggestions any add-ons I'll be more than glad to let you in on the show a very big thank you to the whole production team shout outs to Quasi Dope uh, on the ones and twos right here in the studios and of course to MFR Adachi for producing me from afar <laughs> wherever you are MFR thank you so much to Ninoy to Abna Dubai thank you so much for making this happen uh, right here on the show this is 31 status shout outs to uh, Shaw's Haven for sponsoring the show so for everything anything Banku and Tilapia Shaw's Haven is your number one go-to source if you love yourself some yam chips and pork Make sure you call Shaw's Haven on 050-109-0637, 050-109-0637. And of course, I'm enjoying my juice in the studio. My guest is doing so as well. My team are also doing so. So make sure you call Ori Blend Juices. If you love your freshly made juice, this is just fresh. And she calls this one the rare pineapple juice very rare pineapple juice i must admit so many health benefits it helps detoxify the body and mind it helps boost your immune system 
and it is an inflammation fighter so make sure you go get yourself our blend juices you can call them on the number 020 761 2409 020 761 2409 and so for all your events funeral parties weddings home use whatever it is make sure you call our friends from Ori blend juice is a quick musical breather when we come back we continue with the rest of the discussion stay on
Mary Gunsa in the background, Jaiwa Kwani Nashen Yamensa. I mean, you can't do it on your own. By your own, it won't work. By your own strength, it won't work. So, all ladies listening to us, if you are you are in an abusive relationship the song is just speaking to you right now don't just you know pick some of the nuggets but some of the songs will speak to you on the show leave everything into the hands of god but let's go on to the phone lines and speak to our friend who has joined us vicky zuga renowned Ghanaian actress has joined us on the show we are more than honored you know to have you on the show vicky and we'll find out how she was able to escape if i may want to put it that way from an abusive relationship vicky good afternoon and welcome to the show good afternoon thank you thank you for having me i hope you are doing well i'm I'm also doing very very well all right let's zoom straight into the conversation our topic for today is abusive marriages and we know you are a fighter you are a survivor i don't even want to call you a victim because i (laughs) i don't even want to refer to you as one i know you have survived it and we want the whole world to listen to how you escaped it so vicky when it comes to abuse what is your own understanding in marriage abuse and marriage comes in various forms thank you so much for the opportunity you're welcome abuse comes with so many forms some people think that because they are not being abused physically, it's not abuse. You can be abused emotionally. You can be abused um, psychologically. You can be abused financially. I mean, some people, uh, they are, they, their husbands or wives stop them from doing what they want to do to earn a living. Okay? A lot of women have degrees and uh, 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 certificates that can get them like a, 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 a job that is very lucrative. But... Uh, they are married to men who haven't gotten there. So the men are threatened by such certificate because they think that if the woman gets that kind of a job and earns more than them, then they're going to be disrespectful to them or they're going to look down on them. That's financial abuse. If the woman is at home and she needs something, you have stopped her from working. You want her to be a housemate. So you should take care of her financial responsibilities. But you keep her home and then when she needs something, you think she's too materialistic, she's too demanding and everything. That's financial abuse. Emotional abuse, someone does something to you and then you go, your partner does something to you and you go all quiet and give them the quiet treatment and everything. You want to man up and talk to them like partners. It's just that stay together. They're supposed to, supposed to solve your issues together. If there's an issue, let's talk to like couples. Let's all fight each other. Their fight should be against the problem and not against ourselves. So that is emotional abuse. If there's something wrong in the um, marriage, talk about it and resolve it. Don't punish the other Okay? So the fact that the person is not laying their hands on you doesn't mean that they are not abusing you. Abuse comes in various forms. And we need to watch out all those signs. Okay? And one of the mistakes I made in the past that I don't want people to see is ignoring the signs. Sometimes the red flags are there. But because, oh, okay, I love him. I want maybe to change. Because this is a mistake that we make in relationships before we get into the marriage. Nobody gets married to change. Once they're married, they will even do worse. Whatever someone, whatever negative things you do, or whatever red flag, now while you're dating them, trust me, when they get married, they won't change. They need to change before the marriage. Otherwise, after the marriage, it will get any worse. It'll someone hoping that they will change from treating you wrong or they will change from abusing you. No, it has never worked and I don't think it will ever work. Of abuse. Different types of abuse. I mean, I, I, I went through abuses in three different relationships in a row. Like, so at the point I thought I was the problem. Okay, for three different people to be doing the same things to me. For like uh, um, two years, two, two, yeah, two to three years, I had abusive relationships. I 
had abusive partners. And then I started blaming myself. Okay, I'm not good enough. Maybe I'm just not doing the right thing. Maybe they, but when I came back and uh, in, like as a um, um, uh, so about the whole thing and everything they were doing to me, I realized that it was them that the problem and not me. You know, I said um, physical abuse, mental abuse, like psychological abuse, and all of that. I at the point was going to find that, like I just uh, okay, the financial abuse stuff. He wouldn't let you do what you want to do to other things. Right? If you need something, he thinks you're too demanding and all of that. So it was it got to a point I couldn't take care of my financial needs. But my guy wasn't um, 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 okay with what I was doing. You know, I asked, and he said, "Oh, he won't let me take up the road because probably there's some sort of cooking and stuff like." So he won't let me take it up, and I need something, and I. Asked. But before he came in my life, he was okay with every kind of role I was taking. He was a friend before we started dating. And he was okay with every other thing that he had a problem with when we started dating. So I realized that, okay. And I think I look fantastic for my age. But back in the days when I was in an abusive relationship, I was looking down on myself. I thought I wasn't good. I thought I wasn't attractive enough. I thought I wasn't fluent enough. I thought I wasn't confident enough to be able to stand before anyone to speak. I was who couldn't speak because I was I was I was being belittled by my partner, that woman who who wasn't bold enough to speak out. I was being abused and I couldn't talk to anybody because I was scared of what people would say. I was I, I was I was just because that's what he was a perfect gentleman before every other person but me. To everyone he was a perfect gentleman. But behind closed doors I was being bullied by him. So nobody believed my story. Nobody nobody accepted it like People thought I was exaggerating. They thought I was making it all up. I think the strength came from God because I don't even know how I did it. I woke up one day and I said, enough is enough. And that was it. That was it. The, the realization, the awakening call comes when you least expect. At the point, I thought I couldn't continue anymore. I thought life wasn't worth it and everything. But one day I woke up, I thought about everything I was going through. I thought about my daughter and I said, so enough is enough. I can't continue like this. And I left. It was, I never knew I could do it. I know, and I'm not, it was, it was, when I took the decision, the power came, I took the decision, but later on, I started feeling it. 
it, it, it was hard at the point. But God gave me the strength. mistake I made. I never told anyone. I didn't confide in anyone. I didn't tell my family what I was going through. I didn't tell anyone. I was quiet about the whole thing, which is which was very dangerous because if it had killed me, nobody would have known the, the, the real truth, like behind my bed. So until I started campaigning, I never told anyone what I was going through. I was ashamed because I felt no one would believe me. Looking at how he related with people, no one would. Be, I thought no one would believe me if I said that. So, and I was ashamed. Like, oh yeah, I was thinking that people would judge me. You know, we live in a society that uh, thinks if relationships or marriage doesn't work, then the entire fault is the woman. A woman is to be blamed for failed marriage. A woman is supposed to be blamed for a, a lack of kids in the marriage. A woman is to be blamed for uh, uh, whatever negative thing that comes out of a marriage. A woman is, the finger is pointed at the woman. So I was ashamed to talk about it. I thought no one would believe me. They would think, hey, we want to, we want to wait here. You know, we want to have failed at this one. I didn't want any of that. No, I didn't. It didn't cross my mind. But I didn't want anyone to hear, to know what I was going through at the time. It's a mistake. This is something that no one in an abusive relationship should do. It's a huge mistake. If you decide to stay with someone who is abusing you and not speak to anyone about it, it's extremely dangerous. I embarked on a, a tour, a domestic shop abuse uh, tour, and I visited a couple of regions in Ghana. But at the point, I spent my <laughs> my savings, and I did everything, like um, cash wise, everything was from from my coffers. Sponsors came in to give me products and all, but um, with the money, stuff, I did all by myself. So when I when I adjusted my savings, I had to hold on to the core and I started doing social media um um constantly. You know, I I let people DM me their stories and then I speak to them or direct them, refer them to the right authority to to get help. of my exes, I'm, I'm not, let me tell you this, all of my exes want me back, all of them, all of, every single person I've ever dated wants me back, those who abused and those who don't, all of them want me back, but there's no way I'm going to go back to an abusive partner, and I'm one type of person that once I say it's over, I move on, I don't look back, so they come back. When the Christians are okay, I did me wrong, I'm sorry, and everything. It's a lie. If someone abuses you and you left them, and they come back again, trust me, if you go back, they'll do worse to you. So, yes, it's, 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 it's all, <laughs> all of them have contacted me, asking for forgiveness. I forgive them. Like, I hold nothing against them. I hold nothing against them. But to let them back in my life, no way. <laughs> no way.
welcome. Um, I need to say this. Uh, if, if you contact me, don't think that I'm going to uh, share your story with anyone. I'm very secretive with stuff like that because I know they are confidential, they are private issues. So don't be scared of me telling the public or about your story. I don't do that. I only tell my, my story when I'm advocating. I don't tell. So feel free, whoever they feel free, I'm going to do that on all channel on all yeah, or platforms. Vikizuga, Vikizuga, Vikizuga. So just send me a message on any social media platform and then we take it out from there. And you are doing an amazing job. You're doing a great job to keep doing it. And I want to know that it's okay to be alone. It's okay to to walk out of something that's not working. It's okay to abandon a partner, like let them go. They're not good for you. Don't don't stay hoping that they will change. Don't change thinking that oh, what would the kids eat? What how am I going to afford it? Eat and everything. Young couple and they shame you class. Just take care of you first. Protect yourself and your kids. Because most abusers grew up from an abusive environment. And once you, you stay in an abusive marriage with your kids, your kids will grow up to be abusers. Stop raising abusive children. Walk out of that abusive relationship or marriage today and don't look back. Well, if you just joined us, we just went off the phone with Ghanaian actress Vicky Zuga and she just shared with us a piece of her, of her life, of her experience in an abusive, in fact, abusive relationships. She hasn't been in one, not two, but one too many. And so you can call her what? A pro. <laughs> a pro when it comes to abusive relationships. She's seen it, done that, been there. And today she's out as a survivor and sharing with the whole world. She has a testimony and she shared it with us right here on 31 Status. You're listening to us on TCA Radio. My name is Pamela Boating. I'm still in the studios with Councillor Adofoli who was listening with rapt attention as Vicky was sharing her experience with us. Councillor. Hmm. <laughs> Insightful, isn't it? Yes, yes. It's easier for her to speak about it because mm. she has come out. Yeah. There are those who are not able to speak about it. Mm. It's something they hide because they are not they are ashamed of it. Mm. But you see, it's not their fault. It's not your fault to be in an abusive relationship. Yeah. Uh, so whatever you are, if you are in, this should give you inspiration to come out of it. Yeah. But I was asking the role of the church. Has the church failed? when it comes to tackling the issue of abuse in marriages does the church discuss such issues often or now the church is all about manicracy and now you will be blessed you shall prosper and i say and i say and i say but the cracks of society which starts with the family is on the line it's very true and even divorce we have more coming from the church now mm. so that is a, a, a dangerous path we are shattering now if we who love christ who know christ cannot be that safe place for our brothers and sisters in this kind of relationship then 
we are not doing Christ a good. So I know church, some churches are doing well, some are lacking behind that we can do more. There should be right people who listen. Yeah. Listen to understand. Yeah. No listen to judge. Yeah. And sometimes this kind of rule we set for people. And Vicky was saying, I, 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 I had an issue with it that we make it sounds like the marriage works when a woman just becomes submissive, take anything at all. Yeah. And it's not a man who is just loving the woman. That's the trouble. Mm. Marriage is just all about a woman. If the woman is not humble enough, the marriage doesn't work. That is also wrong. It's the man who leads the woman by example. Yeah. So if the men are coming, they have to lead by example. Unfortunately, when we go to various homes, we don't have fathers. Fathers are dying early. <laughs> Some grow up without fathers. So there's no good father to learn from as a mentor. Yeah. So we are struggling to just learn anything. Whatever we see on the street, we mm. take it to the relationship, mm. which is also a big deal that's going on. So I believe pastors, men of God, leaders in the church, elders are listening to your program, and we will do yeah. much to that. Yeah. I, I think we need to, because even the, the pastors themselves find their, themselves in the red uh, hot soup itself. Most of them are being faced with these issues because they are humans first. Yes, true. The pastors are being faced with that. You see, the thing is, I, I, I keep on telling if before you lead the church of God, you need to lead your home. Okay. If you feel at home, don't pretend to be a good pastor. Because uh, Apostle Paul says that a man who ignores his own family, you are worse than unbeliever. So it starts with you. Yeah. And the goal is each time we can, each time we, we, we our, our spouses, our children are our mirror. If they are happy, we are doing well. When they are not happy, it means there's something we need to work at it. Sometimes we don't listen to them. We just ignore them. We think they complain too much. Mm -hmm. You are nagging. You want to control me. That's not the case. You didn't marry somebody who is like you. So if you have lived with a character or behavior, all this one, and somebody comes to your life and they are pointing that to you, it's a, a sober reflection that I had to go back to me and start working on me. Mm -hmm. That's how I become a better person. Not how I impose myself on them. Since like I'm so of a, a, a huge factor in the house that nobody talk about me. When I'm coming, everybody's running. <laughs> Whatever I say is the last thing. Yeah. No, you're not doing yourself well. Yeah. So I know pastors are struggling with that. There are some suffering mommies who cannot come and tell, tell you what's happening. Because if you say it, mm. the church will be over. <laughs> <laughs> How about the role the society has played? Because Vicky was scared to come out. She couldn't confide in family. Neither could she do that in friends. How judgmental is the society when it comes to issues it of abuse? It starts with the abuser. Mm. The relationship the abuser have with the outsider is different from the relationship he or she, he had with the, those is closer to. Yeah. So when you see the abuser outside, it's nice to you give money, it's smiling, it's all around. So we see one part of the abuser. Mm. But those who are very closer to them, when they are seeing another thing, then they are confused. Ah, this fine man, how can he be who we are mm. talking about? It's mm. you who is making excuses. You don't want to get married or you don't want to make the marriage work or maybe you are talking to someone else. that's what happened to us mm. we should listen to everyone and understand their pain mm. that's what we should do yeah. so the, the society the family as a whole we should all be there for each other that's our rule if we can't be there for each other you are not going to listen just because uh, somebody's making noise let me listen and learn something from the person what can i do to help yeah that's the goal so I think we can do more. We can do, we can do more. Yeah. And stop um, trying to ignore people and trying to blame them, trying to give them names. Then we are asking them to just stay in prison, silent, and the killers will take advantage of them. Mm. Well, let's go onto the phone lines and speak with a psychologist. Let's find out if abuse is a mental problem. People who mental abuse are they mentally derailed or it is more than that we'll go on to the phone lines after this quick quick musical break stay with us Run on one pipe 
right so let's go on to the phone lines and speak with a psychologist uh who be you know helping us expand this topic the question we are asking is is the person met now the abuse mentally derailed or there's more to it than that i've been joined on the phone lines by reverend albright bear mansoon asiwome he is a vice president of the psychological association of ghana that is the ghana psychological association gpa and so reverend albright bear mansoon asiwome good afternoon rev and welcome to the show okay and uh we have been expanding on the topic abuse in marriages and we are asking ourselves you know what causes it how can a lady a christian lady flee from an abusive marriage and so from your point of view as a psychologist how is the Ghanaian statistics faring are we recording more cases of abuse against women or we are on a decline Hello, Rev. Mm. Mm. Era, the Gas Psychological Association provided a service that we call and If they have any with the issues will be generally related to COVID nineteen, but what like that conflict and the other things that we were not or whether it's occurring in homes or not mm. and that's an experience one mm. i can say that we have a lot of this hello rev hello. sorry rev we, we are experiencing some technical hitches but uh if you could kindly kindly reiterate what you just said because we missed you for some minutes you were rather expanding on the experiential bit when it comes to abuse you don't want to focus more on the statistics is that right exactly. so what are the experiences yes 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 please from the beginning yes, yes. Mm. So I was saying that mm. during this COVID era, the mm. Ghana Psychological Association reached out to the public through our telecounseling services mm. so that people could call in and speak with a psychologist if they have a problem. And we see that most of the challenges of which people call us mm. bordered on marriage and conflict in marriage. And some of these also bothered on issues of abuse. Mm. So even without going into pure statistics, we can say that a lot of these things happen in homes, only that people may not be reporting them or may not be bringing them to where the statistics could be collected. And with the report your department or your service received, with the report you received, what what is it looking like is it more women being abused now or is the other side of it well it is gender um discriminatory abuse is both ways mm. you know this is because a lot of people focus on physical abuse when they speak about abuse mm. but we have many forms of abuse there is emotional abuse, there is financial abuse, there is psychological abuse. So if you put all the forms of abuse together, then you can say that abuse is happening the same way to everyone. Mm. But if you want to limit it to physical abuse, 
then you might be tempted to say that because more, more men are normally more physically built mm. or more physically responsive, we might see more men abusing women physically. But when we talk about the other forms of abuse, then men are not said either. Mm. Well, when we talk of abuse, from your view as a psychologist, you study the mind and the behavior of people in general. Is it a mental issue or there's more to it than that? Okay. Before I go into that, let me clarify that mm -hmm. when we say mental issues, people are quick to think of what they will call a mad person or somebody who has a sickness or disease. Mm. Everybody can have a mental problem. Mm. In fact, about one out of four persons in Ghana have a mental condition, mm. whether mild or severe. The only thing is because we do not do a lot of assessment, we are not aware that we have mental problems. So some is having anger issues has a mental problem as much as somebody who has schizophrenia. Mm. So the moment a person is not able to be in control of the mind and act well or rationally, that person has a mental problem. Has that helped the issue? Mm. Yeah, it, it has. it has helped to a certain point or to an extent. It has really helped. But when does it become extreme? Because there are people who have anger issues, you know, the slightest of things and they're flaring up and screaming and throwing tantrums. It's human and it's it's natural, if you may want to put it that way. But when does it become a problem that is, you know, threatening or life-threatening and then the person or the victim must say it is time to pack out? When does it become life-threatening? The moment the person is not able to control anger is a problem. Mm. And we attach so much importance to it, so much that even for counseling psychologists, if they are preparing people for marriage, mm. the moment they notice the slightest sign of one of the couples not being able to control their anger, the premarital counseling is put on hold mm -hmm. and then management is done for that first test mm -hmm. before they come back to the premarital. So anytime a person cannot control his or her anger, it is a problem. Whether it results in verbal abuse or physical abuse, or even if it begins to have a telling effect on the person's own health, there are people who will not do anything physically violent when they are angry, but they may turn it in, and that will be heart problems, blood pressure problems for them. Mm. So anyone who feels that he is not able to express his or her anger uh, well or control it needs the help of a psychologist. Let's go to the victims who are always at the receiving end when it comes to abuse. Um, how do you think abuse affects these people? Because there are people who are in love with your husband. In fact, why would, wouldn't I love you? Because I fell in love with you before I married you, right? But then again, you are beating me, you are physically abusing me, emotionally abusing me, all kinds of abuses. But then again, I'm still staying in. Why do you think such victims still decide to stay in such abusive relationships okay there is something that is called the cycle of violence mm. and people need to know about this cycle otherwise they will remain in the cycle mm. you see when somebody who is very loving begins to abuse you first of all you feel that is not normal Therefore, the person could come back to his or her normal state. 
So you are very hopeful that things will get better. Mm. Now, if the person abuses you, normally there is that little hatred for the person, but you still carry the hope that this is not the person I married. And then the person's response is one of the other factors that keeps people in because that person may come back and be very sweet, be very remorseful and promise not to do it again, sometimes giving gifts to you. Mm. So that makes you begin to think that the person has changed until the cycle begins to repeat itself. Mm. And that is what happens to people. So people need to know that this cycle is not something I should stay in. When I begin to see the sign, when there is tension at home and people are like walking on eggshells, they cannot talk to each other without one person exploding, it is time to seek help from a professional to handle the issue. And sometimes we may even recommend that people should be physically separated for some time until the anger issue is dealt with or the violence issue is dealt with in the person who is visiting this violence on the other person. Mm. Interesting recommendation there. But do you think society has failed victims of abuse? Because I just spoke with uh, a survivor. She doesn't want to be called a victim. I just spoke with her and she didn't want to open up to, in fact she didn't open up to family neither did she open up to friends not even her pastor or an, or an elder in church do you think the judgmental nature of the society has caused to the you know increase in the number of abuses in our society in this day do more education than before and that family especially should know that if a member begins to complain or even if the person doesn't complain about violence in his or her relationship, but they notice it being to take action. Mm. And you see, this is where professionals have to be involved. And I always say this when it comes to marriages. If you do not conduct your marriage properly, when there are problems, it will be difficult for you to know how to resolve them. And mm -hmm. what do I mean by this? A lot of people don't play premarital counseling. But if you've had premarital counseling with a licensed psychologist who is specialized in that field, the person helps you to even know how to identify the indicators that things are going wrong mm -hmm. and when that happens it is just natural for you to run back to your counselor many times issues like this come up and the victim or the survivor does not know who to turn to because they did not establish any professional link from the very beginning of their marriage mm -hmm. those who have this professional link to fall back on they have it easier and when that happens they can quickly make a call that this is what is happening in my marriage and that person has become in quotes an authority in their relationship so the person can call them to order if i should use that word mm. what we have observed over the years is when victims call for help Sometimes, even when you call the other party, they are not prepared to come because that relationship has not been established in the past. Mm -hmm. But for the all the person needs to say is, well, this is happening, I'm not comfortable, I'm speaking to my psychologist or counselor, and he will be calling you or she will be calling you. That makes it easier. So people should not downplay on seeking professional help when they are in relationship and when they want to contact marriage. Can the person carrying out these abusive activities ever change? Because sometimes we want to give people the second chance, the third chance, the fourth chance until they change. But do they ever change? Well, it depends 
upon the nature of the person's problem. For some people, they are simply acting like that because of ignorance. Mm -hmm. Such people, if they go through what we call psychoeducation during therapy, they become aware of the things that are happening to them. They are able to see the triggers themselves and they know how to do what we call de-escalation mm -hmm. so that it doesn't escalate violence. So for some, it will be as simple as that. Okay. But those who may be having severe mental disorders, it will take time to take them through therapy. And while they are being treated, we cannot recommend that they should still be with a victim. So I would say that some people can easily change. Others, it may take time. And for those who have real deep psychological problems, we can never promise that they will change. Now, finally, let me come back to my sisters because it's all about my sisters who are being abused, who are survivors, who are victims and still trying to find their way out or through because there are some people who don't want out. They still want to stay. So find their way through such situations. What are some of the help avenues? What are some of the ways uh, my sisters can deal with abusive relationships, what would you as a psychologist recommend? Okay, so as I said before you get asked this question, first of all, people should seek personal help mm -hmm. at the very initial stages of their relationship. There mm -hmm. is something we call relationship counseling. Mm -hmm. A lot of people only know of premarital counseling, but there is relationship counseling that you can go through even before thinking of marriage. Mm -hmm. These indicators are taught so that people can identify a person who is very likely to become violent. Mm -hmm. It is also important that sisters should not be in a hurry to tie the knot without doing due diligence. Mm -hmm. And I can say that, interestingly enough, most of the victims see the signs very clearly, only that they disregard them. Mm. So when you are doing a remedial work with them, they will confess to you that I saw it, but I thought it wouldn't be a big problem. So what am I saying? People should not take anything that they see as an indicator of violence in a future relationship lightly. They should treat it with all seriousness. Okay. Also, it is good that people should do a lot of reading by themselves on anger, mental disorders, triggers of violence. We should generally um, desire to be knowledgeable in these areas. And also, I will recommend that people can reach out to us as an association, the Ghana Psychological Association. Yes. They can reach out to us, attend our programs when we have sentence on this issue, and also to receive one-on-one -on -one, uh, uh, help from a psychologist to be able to know what to do in these kinds of situations. Any numbers you want to put out there for our listeners who have joined in? Any official social media handles? Any official social media handles or official contact numbers where victims or people who want to reach out to you can do so? The number I am using currently can be used as an official one to, sorry, as an uh, unofficial one to reach out to me personally. Okay. But then, let me send it up a notch higher. Mm. You know, every psychologist is supposed to be licensed by the Ghana Psychological Association. Okay. So, I will rather give out the numbers of our council for people Please go ahead. Yeah. The number of the Ghana 
Psychological Association, our licensing authority. Okay. Zero 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 zero. That's four zeros. Ninety nine eighty nine. Zero two zero. So zero two zero 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 nine nine. Nine. Eight, nine. Okay. Uh, the MTN line is zero five four eight one eight eight one two one. If anyone calls these numbers, they will be able to reach out to any psychologist that they need concerning the special areas of need that they may have. Thank you so much, Reverend Albright. We are so grateful for your time this afternoon and hopefully we'll be calling on you uh, pretty soon to help us discuss more issues that has got to the, has got to do with the psyche of people in the society. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your afternoon. All right, so there you have it, Reverend Albright. I will see me, you know, helping us understand everything when it comes to you know the psychology bit of it today has been a very interesting discussion we have looked at it from every angle we had you know somebody who has survived it talk to us share her experiences with us vicky zuga joined us early on in the show counselor adofoli has given us very interesting interesting insight he's still in the studio he'll be giving us his last words and of course we just went off the phone with reverend albright uh berman soon awusime I'd like to say a very big thank you to all of you who have joined us right from 1 p.m. We are just about wrapping up at 3. I'll be saying goodbye to you and uh, we'll be finding out what's happening with my team Liverpool. How it's going to fare for us later on in the day. Uh, but let me say shout out to all who have joined us on Instagram uh, to samola bayate thank you so much for joining to ace roddy dazi thank you for joining to witty underscore 15 thank you to john say we're all the way in the uk thank you so much to kukua to mrs moat yesterday you tied the knot to mr moat and so i'm sure you're picking more pieces of information and nuggets of wisdom on this show to guide you so congratulations from all of us uh smogans all students of st mary's as uh, St. So, uh, so Mary's Girls Secondary School, we say congratulations to you, Nadia Nama, now called Nadia Moot. And of course, to Michael Dawson Amwati, my brother, Richard Boati, who has joined in Newton Churchill, to Priscilla Momo Mensa, all the way in the US. Thank you for tuning in. To Caleb Wood, Caleb Nathaniel Wood, thank you so much for joining. And all our friends who have also joined in on Facebook, we say a very big thank you to you. Make sure you send in your comments. We are just about wrapping up with the show to peter cosa to Lurita up here to mildred anomel ceo of accent and cares thank you so much for joining us we are taking our last words from councillor adofoli and then uh, we'll be wrapping up with the show and so councillor we'll take your last words uh, what what you want to leave us with on this topic abusive marriages It's not love. Mm. Love does not mean that you disrespect them. It means that you put them first, mm. listen to them, and be considerate. So if any action of yours go contrary to this, you need to start working on yourself. Mm. There's always help out there. So look for help. Just don't be there and say, this is who I am. Your sickness could be hurting people who loves you, mm. who cares about you. Mm. And you might not know the harm you are causing them until they are no more. So nobody on their last day to see their their loved one, and and and, and then they are so 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 more happy that they leave them or they die or they are no more. No, we don't want to live in a regretful life. So let's be there for each other and let's help them and love them. Well, Councillor, would like to take your contact numbers, official social media handles. If people want to reach you, how do they reach out to you? All right, on Facebook is Frank Demadufoli. Mm. On Instagram is Councillor Dufoli. Mm. Um, my website is councilladufoli.com. Uh, you can reach me on phone or on WhatsApp on 020 I take it again 
020-677-4279. You can also write in by email, info at counseladvalley.com. All right. Thank you so much for joining us, Councillor. We are so grateful for your time and, you know, your knowledge this afternoon. And we pray that you have a very beautiful week ahead of you. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks for having me. All right. And so time check is just about 10 minutes to the top of the hour, 3 p.m. And it has been the 31 status. I have really, really enjoyed the show. Uh, and uh, we'll be cutting some pieces of it and we'll be sharing it on our YouTube channel. So in case you missed it, uh, well, do not worry. You can go back and watch after the live broadcast has ended. Or you may want to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It is the Christian Avenue. Subscribe and get notifications on everything we put on that platform like to say a very big thank you to you for doing the listening and to my whole production team to Kwesi dope thank you so much for the ones and twos god bless you to mf adachi producing me from afar thank you so much amy and to ninoy executive producer Bakope, and of course to abna dubai also thank you so much for making this a reality let's also thank our sponsors to shores having everything anything banco and tilapia the other place to go to so make sure you reach out to them they are very much active on social media shores haven s-h-o-r-s and then haven h-a-v-e-n and uh, make sure you like their pages and make sure you buy from them we'll be putting out the numbers pretty shortly and so if you're having an, any party any you know wedding any ceremony or you yourself you are just at home you feel like eating banku and tilapia or fried yam with pork and now she's even added okra stew and so make sure you call her on the number 050 109 we are also being refreshed in the studios by our friends from ori blend juices very very nutritious juices very very much fresh and so if you can see our blend juices today we are having the rare pineapple juice solid branding solid packaging so many health benefits helps detoxify the body and mind help boost your immune system and it's an inflammation fighter and so if you want any natural taste with every drop of it Ori Blend Jesus should be your go-to source. Make sure you call them on the number 020-761-2409. 020-761-2409. Thank you to all our sponsors for making this happen. I'll be saying bye-bye to you in the next few minutes, but I would just implore you, if you're listening to me, to do well to take care of yourself. Make sure you commit the rest of the day into God's hands and make sure you have an awesome week. Pray before you carry out with any activity i'll be back your way same time next week at 1 p.m on the christian avenue radio if you haven't liked our pages yet do so now so you could get any notification on any of our live broadcasts next week is going to be an interesting interesting production again on this platform if you're making your way to the upsa auditorium drive safely take care if you're not make sure you join them on their semi-virtual edition they call this one honoring the legends and timeless edition and so all the female legends will be there talking from mary gansa to you know about our mary about our Kone, <laughs> to amy newman to the tego sisters what have you helena rabbles they will all be there you know to glorify god and so whilst you're staying in the presence with us in the studio make sure you go there as well and stay in the presence of god my name has been pamela boating and the show has been 31 status have a great afternoon do well to take care of yourselves bye bye Jesus, oh, come up, Jesus, oh, dear, my boy.